what we're doing is simply extracting oxygen from the air that we're pumping in from the outside. This is the feelings profile system and what, uh, what that does is give us an assessment, an assessment of a person's mood state at any given point in time. We'll go ahead and pedal and see how that looks. Okay. So we are exposing our subjects in this most recent research project that is presently underway to 8,000 feet altitude, simulated altitude in this normal baric chamber. The atmospheric pressure will be the same. The percentage of oxygen that makes up that atmosphere would be much less. An interesting problem, you might say, that we have yet to answer is hypoxia induced by hypobaric environments, or actually, let's say, going up to altitude to the equivalent of 8,000 feet, where air pressure is reduced, but the fraction of oxygen is the same. Is that different physiologically than staying at a normal baric pressure, which we have, and simply reducing the fraction of oxygen to simulate altitude. So when you're breathing air in and out of your lungs, the density of that air is an important consideration, especially when you're thinking about how resistant the lungs are to flow of air out and in. What we can do with this data is determine at sea level how much oxygen is being consumed at a given workload, and then reproduce that workload in the chamber at altitude and see how much oxygen is going to be required to do the same amount of work. Classically, we see that uh, at an altitude of 14,000 feet, for example, 4,300 meters, uh, the maximum work capacity is reduced by almost exactly 25 percent. The uh, theory now of having people adapt to high altitude by sleeping at high altitude and adjusting their their in, and increasing their capacity to deliver oxygen has resulted in the, uh, the quintessential sleep high, train low uh, uh, attribute of, of using altitude to help improve performance. It's a kind of a more natural way to uh, dope your blood with more red blood cell mass. The interesting thing to me is from a health perspective, there's so many diseases that result in tissue hypoxia that if we can induce it in a controlled research situation, we might be able to find ways to adapt people who are experiencing hypoxia-inducing hypoxia diseases that would allow them to uh, maybe benefit from intermittent brief exposures to hypoxia to improve their tissue delivery of oxygen. How are you doing there, fella? <laughs> okay, that's one of the most important things we do is not to forget about our, <laughs> our subjects, you know. Because we are at 49 feet altitude, we have this wonderful opportunity to do very good uh, baseline sea level studies. If we were virtually anywhere else in the country that wasn't sea level, it, we would have to go to sea level to conduct those baseline studies. Uh, the, probably the, the, the greatest blessing about being at William & Mary is the students. Uh, they're brilliant, they're dedicated, they're, they're uh, committed, and it's their joy, absolute joy to work with. Saturation is 91% and at sea level it's 98, 99%. So right. this is what we would typically expect of a person when they go to Vail, Colorado. Try going for a 10 mile run at Vail, Colorado, it's not fun. Yeah. From personal experience, <laughs> not a good time.